Hi everyone! Welcome to your course, Chemistry for Engineers Laboratory. I will be your instructor throughout the half of this semester and this will just be a very short introduction on the things that you need to know, the things that you have to learn, and the things that are expected of you throughout this course. So there you have it in the first slide, the name of the course, Chemistry for Engineers Laboratory. And uh, uh, my name is Engineer Janaika A. Tapiador. We will be covering five topics for this introduction. Let us first start with the course description. So this is a fundamental laboratory course designed to relate and apply the principles and theories in chemistry to engineering practices. It is a combination of experimental and calculation laboratory. So expect that you will do a lot of um, calculation, basic algebra, um, whenever we are performing or whenever you are trying to calculate for the results of an experiment that we may have. So next up is your course learning outcomes. Your course learning outcomes uh, are commonly referred or is commonly referred to as your CLO. Now these are the things that you need to learn or these are the things that you need to achieve in order for you to pass the subject. So at the end of this course, the student shall be able then to, your CLO number one, explicitly state experimental observation in relation to the specific principles and fundamental concepts of chemistry. Your CLO number two, interpret results clearly obtained from the experiments. Your CLO number three, Answer questions related to the performed experiments. CLO number four, develop critical and technical communication skills. CLO number five, explain the mechanics of alpha, beta, and gamma decay, as well as the correlation between the half-lives. Your CLO number six, Understand the natural environment and its relationships with human activities. And your CLO number seven, understand the natural environment and its relationships with human activities. So the third topic will be your course syllabus and topic learning outcomes. So for the midterms, we will have three experiments. You have experiment number one, calorimetry. Experiment number two, heat of combustion. Experiment number three, metals and some aspects of corrosion. We're in, uh, we're in, in the midterms as well. We will have your activity number one, nuclear reactions, binding energy, rate of decay. And activity number two, Crystal lattices and unit cells under basic crystal structure concepts. So at the end of midterms, these are your topic learning outcomes. We commonly refer to it as your TLOs. So letter A, under analyze and solve problems on thermochemistry, um, this is achieved in your experiments number one and number two. So as you can see, when you have already achieved the topic learning outcome, a CLO is also achieved. So every TLO, a CLO is connected to it. So letter B, evaluate problems on nuclear chemistry to achieve your CLO number 5. Letter C, perform and evaluate parameters on calorimetry to achieve CLO number 1. Letter D, Evaluate heat values of combustion and reactions to achieve CLO number 4. Letter E, solve problems on crystal lattices to achieve CLO number 3. And 
Letter F, discuss the mechanics of corrosion to achieve your CLO number 4. So during the final term, these are the experiments that uh, we should perform. Experiment number 4, mechanical properties of materials. Number 5 is water, its properties and purification. Number 6, determination of dissolved oxygen of water. And number seven, cigarette smoking and air pollution. So uh, as part of the finals, we have activity number three, wherein we would be performing, we, sh we should be performing community immersion as a means that we care for the environment. So after the final term, these are the topic learning outcomes that you should achieve, letter A, Observe and evaluate the mechanical properties of materials in relationship with your CLO number 2. Letter B. Discuss filtration and different filter media in relation to your CLO number 7. Letter C. Avoid smoking in relation to your CLO number 6. Letter D. Discuss and evaluate the different chemical components and reactions from cigarettes and air pollution, uh, in, also in relation to your CLO number 6. And finally, discuss different environmental technology to mitigate air and water pollution in relation to your CLO number 7. So next stop is your course outcomes assessment tools. Your course outcomes assessment tools are actually the um, tools that we use in order for us to calculate your scores or your grades. So our tools will consist of two. You have your class standing, wherein the class standing will consist or will comprise of your quizzes and your um, experimental reports. And of course, your exams, wherein you have a midterm exam and a final exam. So the last topic is the computation of scores. So how do we compute your scores for your grade? So let's go first to the midterm. Um, this is how we calculate your raw midterm score. You have 50% of the class standing plus 50% of the midterm exam score. Now for the raw final score, it's actually the same. 50% of your class standing and 50% of your final exam score. Now your final score or your final grade is computed as 50% of your midterm score plus 50% of your raw final score. So please uh, take a look at the note indicated here. Scores are transmuted to an equivalent grade where a score of at least 60% would be the minimum passing grade of 75. So what does this mean? For any activity that you will be having, you should get at least 60% of the perfect score in order for you to get a minimum passing grade, which is 75. So for example, I provided you um, a quiz that is worth 10 points. So for you to pass that particular quiz, you should get 60% of 10, which is 6 points. So uh, another example, let's say your reports. So for your uh, experimental reports, for example, uh, the perfect score or the total score is 50. So for you to pass that particular report, uh, you should get at least 60% of 50, which is 30 points. So for any activity, might that be a quiz, experimental report, you should get at least 60% of the perfect score for you to have a minimum passing rate of 75. But of course, since um, you are first freshmen or first-year students, I would advise you to aim higher than 60% para po pag 
Kanyari, nag-aim ka ng 90, 90% of the perfect score. At least, kulangin ka man ng konti, di ba? Pasado pa rin. Unlike, if you just, um, if you just aim for the passing score, paano pag kinulang ka? O di babagsak, tapos ulitin mo ulit yung subject next term. So, you should aim a little bit higher than the passing grade to assure your uh, passage of the um, course that we have. So, that's it for now, class. Um, this is just a very short introduction of the things that you need to learn and expect from this course. Uh, for the next meeting, we will be covering the first topic, which is experiment number one. And the title of your experiment number one is calorimetry. So, you'll see more of me in the upcoming videos. Uh, I will be posting announcements soon. And for the meantime, just sit back and relax. And um, stay home, stay healthy, and stay safe. Goodbye.